I'm John Sherman and these are my great ball contraptions. So starting here at this end, we start with circular logic. Uh, one of my most difficult and, and challenging designs, but my favorite, it, it's, it's all mine. The biggest issue was really packaging the motor and, and all the supports inside. And then we come down the, uh, the adaptable ramps to ski jump module, which uh, is one of the most finicky because it, it, a little bit of friction will stop the balls from picking up, like that one right there. Um, and then the next one is the zigzag square stair. That's actually the first one I ever built. Yesterday it was a real problem. Today it's running very smoothly and you can really see the, the, the soccer ball, the way the motion goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. That one's always a favorite of, of people who see it. So It's really fun to just sit there and watch them go back and forth on the stairs. Yeah, it looks really good when, the, when it's really full because it looks kind of like two lines switching okay. places as well. Um, next to that is is uh, one of my newest ones. This is the first time I've had it at BrickCon. Uh, it's four bar and really all it is is a simple four bar mechanism, one of the most useful mechanisms in engineering and mechanics. And that one also won an award this week. So congratulations really with that. And then moving on the sweep stair, my second oldest model. And, and this one was came about because I had a whole lot of arches I didn't really know what to do with and I don't do a lot of architecture so so uh, that uh, solved that problem um, and then on the end my my newest module I call this seesaw this is based on an idea that Josh David hat did he posted one similar I couldn't really see all the all the uh, aspects of it but I like the the teeter-totter motion so this is my take on, on that type of motion. And it's my newest one, and it's actually running really well for a first time show. Okay. Yeah, and I love the, the motion with that, the way the balls transition back and forth moving up there is neat. Yeah, and it's surprisingly tricky to get that transition just right. Uh, when I was testing it earlier in the show, it, it wasn't quite doing it, so putting the, the two inverted uh, slopes there made a big difference. Balls were actually bouncing off the end and then bouncing back up the ramp, but that, that traps them a little better. So it's, it's those little modifications that make all the difference. Sorry. Um, and then on, on the end here is the three-wheeler. It's a, uh, a common design for a, uh, a, a wheel type. I've just stacked three of them to get a lot of height. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my rattle ramp, my spiral rattle ramp, which makes use of the click hinges that uh, the, the angle for each click is such that you get a 16 in a circle. So I've just spread them out in, into a, uh, a, a ramp formation and, and it makes a nice little plinking noise as it goes down that, that I like. Uh, then on to, uh, to the ball run. This is based on an Akiyuki design. Um, and, and the fact that I had a whole lot of little orange clips and I couldn't figure out what to do with them and then I saw his design for this and I said that's what I need to do. Exactly, no, that orange colors work really well with like the, the black tubing and everything so a really nice looking module. Yeah, orange is an odd color to work with but it, it works on that one. Uh, next we have a two arm lift, another example of a four bar mechanism. Uh, again, a very useful mechanism. And then next to that is the escapade, which is just a, a simple rotating. It's, it's actually got two uh, uh, shafts in the back that are synchronized, so everything moves in motion. And uh, that's also one that people really like to watch because they, they seem to like that essing up. And I've got it set as vertical as I can get away with, so the balls stay in and don't pop out. And then coming off of that is an Akiyuki snake ramp back to circular logic. There you go. So, so the whole thing, have you ever timed how long it takes a ball to go through this whole circuit? It's pretty close to two and a half minutes. Okay. It, sometimes uh, there's a few places where they may, the ball may not select very quickly, like four bar, ball, four bar. Uh, it, sometimes it, it picks up other balls, depending on which side of the ramp it happens to be on. So. But it's about two and a half minutes. 
And with this many modules, when you come to a show like BrickCon, how long does it typically take you to set this all up for the show? Well, it took me a good four hours to okay. set it up. Part of it is with some of the new modules, I hadn't really worked out ahead of time what order I was going to run. So I was kind of fiddling with, with the right order. And, and then I had a module that, that didn't work very well, so it, it got replaced, and mm -hmm. which took a little more reorder. But the machines themselves usually come pretty much ready to run. Um, but I drive a very small car, <laughs> so some of these have to be broken down in, in a lot of pieces, like circular logic breaks down very compactly, and the, and the spiral ramp down there uh, has to be broken down. So, so there's a fair amount of rebuild that goes with those. But, yeah. but most of the rest of them uh, stay more or less intact. There you go, and it looks like it's running smoothly right now, so hopefully for the rest of the public day today it continues like yeah, this. No big jams so far, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. Well, thanks for talking with me about the layout here. I appreciate it. Sure, no problem.